Hello everyone, the December Review here, back again with the grand finale of AJLT Season 2. It's hard to believe that it's already been two months since the return of the SATC universe, and here we are again at the end. The good news is that it was announced just this week that Season 3 has been greenlit, so while we say goodbye to this chapter, we do have another to look forward to down the road. As always, spoilers are ahead, so make sure to check out the show streaming on the Max app. So last week brought us the rather anxiety-inducing setup to the big ending. It seemed almost everyone on the show was battling through a difficult situation. This week picks up the morning after, and while some big topics are discussed, the ending goes out mostly on an upbeat note. Since this is titled The Last Supper Part 2, let's start with the main course of Carrie and Aiden. Things started to seem bleak for the now thrice couple as Aiden needed to get home to attend to his son's accident putting a huge question mark over not just Carrie's new home that she bought with them in mind, but also the entire relationship. And things get answered, kind of, sort of, not really, but also, yeah, they do. Much like their on-screen romance, this ending isn't exactly clear. So Aiden shows up after Carrie's final apartment dinner and, get this, actually goes inside. After proclaiming multiple times that he wouldn't ever go in there again, he does. And when Carrie asks where his luggage is, it's clear a heavy conversation is about to be had. As fans, we've speculated where this could all lead. Whether you were on Team Big or Team Aiden for all these years, with a new set of circumstances, would this be the time that they get it right, or will this be when Aiden needs to walk away for the first time? Well, he indeed does walk away, citing his need to be home with his family. But there is a catch. It's not over. Carrie just needs to wait five years. Seriously, that's a pretty big ask for any circumstances, let alone after just selling your own apartment and buying a new, much larger home for the pair. It's left open-ended as to what will become of this, which allows for major room to speculate where things will be in Season 3. Carrie, while a bit knocked off the rails, stands by her decision to move on from her neighborhood, signaling her character's development. Heck, she even did adopt that kitten, so Carrie's outlook right now, while a bit unsteady with the shakeup, well, it is very much focused in the now, as confident as we've ever seen her. One thing I feel like AJLT has missed the mark on a bit is even though that the individual episodes are longer than SATC, the seasons are much shorter. I feel like there wasn't enough time to dedicate on screen their new relationship and how it all came together so quickly again. Yes, we know their history, so the chemistry is there. But with such a long time in between their last connection, we saw bullet points of them but it wasn't really elaborated enough. With so many different characters on the show now, along with a few time jumps, this unofficial breakup didn't hit like it could have with more of the day-to-day on-screen shenanigans the original series was able to show. One thing that did hit pretty hard is the meetup between Miranda and Steve. After deciding to stop shutting the past out, Miranda heads out to the boardwalk, never a bad idea, and the pair have a heart-to-heart. It's an excellent scene and I'm sure one that many fans are happy to see. With all of their chaos that their relationship has had to deal with over the last few years, having them find common ground was great. The biggest spoiler was of course one former cast member making a return to this last episode. It's zero secret that Kim Cattrall would be here as Samantha, the only thing was how and why. Which reminds me, let's take a look back at my prediction for Season 2. I predicted way back in my first in just like that video that Cottrell would be back. Obviously, it's more hope than reality, but here we go once again for me to go on record and say it will happen in season two. I know, it won't, but if by some chance it does, I can use this in a future video and feel cool about myself for about three minutes. So it's worth a shot. You know what? I don't need this. So here I am today and clearly do need a haircut, but here to bask in the glory of finally getting a prediction correct. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> By having the reveal leaked out so long ago, though, it kind of took away the impact overall. Imagine if no one knew. It was 100% on lockdown. The interwebs would have blown up with the buzz after it just aired. But by word getting out and the subsequent interviews on the subject, 
did create an anticipation which would have been lost if it was kept under wraps. I assumed the Samantha phone call was going to happen right at the end, but much to my surprise, it's right in the beginning. It seems that she tried to fly back to Manhattan for the dinner party, but her flight was delayed, so she called to bid farewell to the apartment instead. I will say that it was great to see her, even if we know the circumstances behind the scene. Sure, the cast wasn't there for any of it, and it's just an edited together moment, but that happens way more than we know in films and TV. So blocking out the drama of it all, I really enjoyed seeing Samantha's return, and it was in true Samantha fashion. Hopefully this sparks the potential for another more expanded appearance in the future, but by all accounts this seemed like the final moment. However, did we really even think that this was going to happen in the first place a year ago? So I'm going to continue my prediction game and say that Samantha will be back, full time no less, for season 3. I mean, why not, right? I'm not sure. Lisa Todd Wexley and Herbert continue to shine here through some rather difficult circumstances. Things get pretty dark, especially during the party scene where the couple have a discussion. Already the season's highlight, here for the finale, Nicole Parker stepped front and center to any conversation regarding possible award nominations for her performance. It's as good as it gets. Charlotte managed to survive her night of drinking and continued her bottom line of needing Harry and the family to make it all work now that she's continued her career. I really thought her finest moments in the season came when trying to find herself a bit through deciding to return back to the gallery. Charlotte was used mostly for the lighter side of the show as her chemistry with Harry is off the charts. But looking back, there was a clear trajectory at play here, one that echoed literally every single cast member on the show. And that's navigating your way from one point to another. You can take both seasons of Anne just like that and see a starting and an end point up till now. Some of the faces and places weren't the main focus, but rather what they meant along the way to help our characters find that next level that they were searching for. Charlotte could have been content continuing to manage her home life, but it was clear something was missing. And when the, she was confronted with the idea of returning to work, which seemed irrational at first, the mistake of that special brownie of all things allowed an honest reflection for the character to regain the concept of who they were. On the surface, Che was an easy target against the backdrop of Miranda and Steve's breakup. For decades, Miranda was always so sure, and here things were very much in question. Che never stood a chance in the audience's eye as a sympathetic soul, and looking back, maybe they were never meant to be one in the first place. Their relationship was very much the lead into them taking the next step forward, a point very well made here in the finale during their excellent conversation together. And maybe it wasn't so much about Aiden and Carrie as much as what Carrie needed to flourish from the loss of her husband. Aiden just happened to be the one to be there. A familiar spark in an otherwise redundant landscape. Change is scary and usually met with resistance. It's sort of easy to stay in the routine. That way you can try to avoid as much disappointment as possible. You know how if you have two magnets and try to place them together using the same side, their natural force ends up pushing them away flip them over and they lockstep once again. That polar resistance was just shown on screen in various ways as our cast worked their way through trying to find their way back together again. I know that's a tough comparison, but it sounded good for a minute there. <laughs> Overall, I very much enjoyed season two and look forward to the next chapter. During these videos, I've tried to do a basic recap with some thoughts mixed in and I appreciate everyone who stopped by the channel. There's lots more to dive into regarding this show, so stick around as I'll have a video down the road for my favorite moments of Season 2, along with more predictions and news as the next season begins to take shape, along with more movie and TV show reviews. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll be back with more AJLT in a...